This is the HyperX Pulsefire Haste Wireless, a follow up to the highly regarded wired version that made a name for itself for being cheap with high quality and high performance. But the leap to go from wired to wireless can provide some tricky tests, so the real question is, is it as simple as cutting the cable for HyperX to bring out another great mouse? It also claims to be resistant to spillages, so we're going to find out if it still works after I put it in the shower. I have previously reviewed the wired mouse on this channel and I loved it. It even featured in the best gaming mice of 2022 video and I said that the wired model is the best budget gaming mouse you can buy. Needless to say this wireless version comes with a weight of expectation, it better not disappoint me or I'll throw it at a wall. The Pulsefire Haste wireless has an ambidextrous design that is probably closest to the Razer Viper series and the SteelSeries Sensei. It is a few millimetres smaller in length in comparison to the Sensei and the Viper with it being just 124mm long. It has a smooth centred curvature so it's not going to be a mouse that would have a point which will push up against your hand or massively demand adjustments to hold it. My hand literally just sits on it. I'd say this mouse would be fitting pretty much for all grip types. The curves on the sides don't go in that much so there's plenty of support for those that like to have their fingers snug up against the shell. For those that also like to have their ring finger supported with a nice little perch the buttons do not overhang the sides so you have some extra room. You can see how this mouse is aiming to please everyone here. Interestingly the mouse has gained a deal breaking for some two whole grams of weight in its cable cutting surgery so it's gone from 59 to 60 61 grams. But we don't shame weights on this channel, as long as the mouse and you are happy with the weight that's all that matters. The shape size and coating are the same on the, both the wide and wireless versions, it's available in either black or white and has a somewhat coarse texture. There are still some strategically placed holes around the mouse which contribute to weight loss. Thankfully there's no holes on the side of the mouse so those that find them irritating will be pleased. There are some holes on the tops of the buttons which for those that use a claw grip and depending on how far up their fingers are might find them in the way and distracting. For those that might hold the mouse similar to myself the holes don't get in the way at all. Ignoring the holes there's a few areas that can build up dirt. We need to stop pretending that we are all clean gamers all the time. Not everyone's desk looks like a model home. The lines that run along any seals on the mouse are actually quite large making it easy to use a microfiber cloth and give it a wipe down. For those that have pets well unlucky hair will get inside due to the fact that it's open to the world. But I can't be mad at my cat I mean look at her. This mouse has an IP rating of 55 which means it's dust resistant and resistant to water coming from a water jet with a diameter of 6.3 millimeters from any angle. That's the details. I mean only an idiot would test this really. Did it survive? Well we'll get to that, it needs to dry off first. The main mouse 1 and 2 switches are using TTC Golden Micro switches which are rated for 80 million clicks, actually gaining 20 million more clicks from the wired version. These switches are not that common in comparison to Huano, Omron or Kale switches which dominate most of the gaming mice these days. Here's a sound test for you anyway. The scroll wheel is quite sturdy and reliable, it has a nice smooth scrolling motion but still has some noticeable notches and it has a solid click as well. The remaining side buttons are also high quality, they are a good size, well placed so they're very easy to reach with a roll of a thumb. The last button is the DPI toggle that sits on top, it does its job very well, toggling through all 5 DPIs. The sensor is a 3335, this is a more mid range sensor with up to 16,000 DPI support and 1000Hz polling rate. In terms in terms of performance this mouse sensor is honestly going to be fine. When there's a higher end sensor it's just a case of increased numbers. As an example the best at the moment can track on glass and a few extra features like increased polling rate but nothing that will really give you a noticeable advantage. This sensor is still energy efficient and I think the only downside is that it has a minor wake up time of around 1 second. Finally you get 4 100% PTFE feet which will be great on pretty much every mouse pad plus spares and there's a USB type C cable included with some grip tape and has a dongle adapter and the mouse has a USB dongle slot which as someone that has a lot of gaming mice it's amazing because I don't have to put it in a bag or keep the box so they're both together. So now it's opinion time, I'm going to try and contain myself in some places because first I really like this mouse, I don't want to get carried away and make excuses for the flaws that it may have. I have been playing a lot of Overwatch 2 to test this mouse and 
I have been slamming hard with it. It's probably one of the few mice that I have just naturally got to grips with almost immediately. The build quality is solid, all the switches feel great. I've been using it on my Fnatic Dash and Quick Heavy and it just feels natural for me to use. I can see the shape might be lacking for those that prefer to get a really good hold on the mouse. Even I prefer ergonomic mice, however this one just seems to naturally attach to my hand without getting in really up snug against it. So the shape, coating, holes, everything, I just love it. And the scroll wheel is perfect for me. It's by far one of the most consistent scroll wheels that I've used in recent years and scroll wheels are very important to me as they have become more important for in-game use, such as in Overwatch 2 where I use it to spam annoying voice lines. However, I can't ignore that this mouse does have an inferior sensor and yet its recommended retail price is still a bit higher at around about $80, especially in comparison to some other mice at the same price bracket which are using better sensors. I feel that the price is just asking a bit too much, it is a $30 increase on the wired version, but that also does regularly go on sale. Despite that, I feel like personally this mouse is somewhat perfect for an ambidextrous mouse that is. There's only one truly perfect mouse and that's the Logitech G403. When reviewing mice there are very few that I continue to enjoy afterwards but this is now one of them and you get a small bonus of it being water and dust resistant which isn't a huge deal but with the holes at least you know that the mouse is somewhat safe from the harsh toxic wasteland that is your room. So I'd highly recommend buying this if you can get one at a decent price. If you can get like a 25% plus discount on it then I'd say that this mouse is probably the best mouse that you can get in terms of value for money. There's only one more thing left to answer. Did the mouse survive its shower? It did. Now it's all clean. Probably even cleaner than you. Just to let you know though, you do this at your own risk and you shouldn't put your mouse in the shower as it does void the warranty. My reviews are also not always positive. Don't believe me? Check out my Rockat Cone XP Air review on screen now.